Hey, Holly.
Hi, Neil. Sorry, I was on mute. Oh, no worries. I had waited to open up the room until you got here to make sure you were squared and everything. Okay, my keyboard isn't because of the Wi-Fi is not working properly, so I might not be able to handle too much of the chat. Okay, I can verbalize it to you, um, and then okay. you can you can answer. From okay, there. and then Carolyn said she's going to be on. Yes. Okay. Great. I don't see her as of yet, but she said she would be. Okay. All right. So I'll go ahead and let everyone in the room. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining today's CAP Office Hour with Neil Kelly of the State CAP Office, as well as myself, Veronica Parker, with CAP Technical Assistance Project. And we will get started shortly. We have about a little more than a minute before we officially get started. Um, but for those of you who are joining us this afternoon, if you are experiencing any technical difficulties, please be sure to let us know in the chat and we will be able to provide assistance to you. And in addition, um, we are muting everyone upon entry into the Zoom room. We wanna make sure that we have clear audio for all of our participants and we don't pick up on any feedback or additional conversations that may be going on in the background. So the time is now one o'clock, so we will go ahead and get started with today's CEP office hour. Okay, and everyone who's in the room, um, again, if you experience any difficulty, please be sure to use the chat to let us know what is going on and we will be able to provide assistance to you via a private chat. Um, you are all muted at this time and um, you can or you are welcome to use your camera if you'd like, but if you don't, that's okay. We are recording today's meeting, so it will be available on the California Adult Education Program website later on this afternoon for you to be able to access at a later time, or if you'd like to send this information to another colleague who was not able to attend this afternoon. In addition, please feel free to use the chat to communicate to ask questions, to communicate amongst one another, to share files, whatever you see fit please use the chat for that. We will be taking attendance for today's webinar, excuse me, for today's office hours. So if you have logged in using a name other than the name that you registered with, please be sure to let us know so that we can account for you in the chat. In addition, if you are participating, which with social distancing, you probably shouldn't be, but if you so happen to be with someone else, please be sure to let us know who all the participants are so that we can account for everyone in our attendance. So now- Veronica, mm -hmm. just really quick. Some people are having trouble hearing you and some people are and aren't. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I'm, okay. No, but, but I don't think it's um, the volume. I think it's just some people like Emma and uh, a few other people up in the chat said they can't hear you. So I'm not sure maybe someone can troubleshoot that while you go on. Sorry okay, to I'll, no worries. I'll be sure to take a look at that. Um, but I actually am done, so I'll turn it over to you, Neil, who will take us into the discussion for this afternoon. All right, thanks, Veronica. I'm assuming everybody can hear me. Uh, I'm going to give a quick update today related to Kate, and then Carolyn Zachary is um, available, and she'll take us through a CDE update. And then we'll have plenty of time for questions and answers, as well as any sharing as far as what's going on, um, how you're doing with getting online instruction up, what services are you provided, anything you wanna share, hopefully we'll have more time for sharing today as well. If there's anything else you want us to cover, please uh, type it into the chat and let's get going. So just updates on current events related to CAPE, we did get a few questions. There is some anxiety out there about the May revise. And we don't have any you know, secret um, talks with the governor 
or we don't know what's going to happen with the May revise, but we do know that we're getting a lot of federal money coming into the state. And so with all that federal money, hopefully that will help us um, you know, bear the burden of you know, cuts to other programs. So we're hoping that that federal CARES money will stop them from cutting uh, the state budget on programs like adult education. But I don't uh, have any new information, nor have we uh, had any discussions with Department of Finance, things like that. Um, but we're hoping that that influx of federal dollars will help uh, ease any stress that's been put on the state budget as a result of this uh, COVID-19. So any questions about the May revise? I'd like to take those questions right now. Let's see if there's any questions. Okay, hearing none, moving on. As far as CAPE goes, I mean, as far as spending funding, we haven't waived any of the requirements, but you can still use CAPE funding for instruction and services for students over the age of 18 in those seven program areas. And so if someone needs supportive services, if someone needs food or childcare, or transportation, those kind of things, um, we can assist. Now, transportation, you know, I guess, where would they be going? But anyway, uh, those supportive services are available. And then if you want to refer students to particular other agencies that you know of uh, to help them, you know, with other issues, you can do that too. So we really want the adult uh, ed community to be responsive to our students' needs and help them out uh, even if you are offering online instruction, maybe your district has decided not to, uh, but you can still provide those services to the students. Um, so hopefully you're clear on that. Um, I don't know if we have any questions on that. Let's see. Okay, no questions on that. Um, one last thing that we'll be doing is as you guys ramp up for online instruction or providing services to your students and being a valuable part of the community, we'd like to hear some of those success stories. So TAP is going to be, okay, so Veronica is going to uh, deal with those um, hearing issues on the online. So. Just uh, so what I wanted to say was, as you ramp up, get started, come back from break, if you are having success, if you are doing innovative stuff, if you are offering some real interesting online, you know, education or services or involved in something magical in your community, please let us know. Because we would like to let other people know, especially you know, uh, here in Sacramento or as state level leadership, those kind of things and put it on our website, maybe put it in the newsletter. If there's an article in your uh, local community, we'd like to put that on the daily digest as it goes out to all the community colleges and uh, to the chancellor's office as well as to the governor's office. So anything you can do to promote what you're doing. If you do have some information to share, we'd love to uh, brag about how well adult ed is responding during this crisis. Uh, let's see, so Connie said, our stuff is posted on OTAN and I think we will be doing training. Okay. All right, so if there's other venues that are also collecting this information, let us know so you don't have to repeat it more than once. Just tell us if you've sent information up to one of the state level vendors. Um, We'd love to hear about it because a lot of times if we look at the state data, like if we look at the TOPS Pro data next month, it's not really going to tell the story. We might be able to see some of that information, but to get the detailed information would be important to hear from you what you're actually doing. Yeah, we're seeing, you know, student enrollment at this school, but what does that mean? Um, what does that mean in an online environment? Maybe there's some creative things you're doing. So, um, 
please keep in touch with us on as you as you ramp up as students come back as you offer valuable uh, instructional programs and services in the community so with that um, and then Jody offers connecting students with nonprofits such as Feeding America and other resources for food and support. Yeah, that kind of information is really critical at this time to show, you know, that we're part of the, the community. We're helping out. Uh, we're just not sitting on the sidelines. Um, we're actively participating. So Veronica, with that, I want to not cut us short today. I'd like to bring in Carolyn. If uh, Veronica's unmuted, Carolyn, I'll turn it over to her. Thanks, Neil. I'm hoping I'm unmuted. Yes, you are. Oh, perfect. All right. Well, hello, everyone, and happy Friday. Um, a couple of items to update you on the CDE side. Uh, I just want to kind of capitalize on or, or tag on to what Neil was talking about, about data. And I know those of you that have a WIOA Title II grants, you're very concerned about what your data is going to look like and how this is going to affect your funding. Um, so first of all, I want to say that the data that we use for the grants that will be awarded July 1, 2020, the, that data is actually last year's data, not this current year's data. And then I want to assure you that as we move into the 21-22 funding cycle, we're going to be looking at the data over the first three over the three years of the first WIOA grant and be looking at your data. We're going to be looking at the first three quarters of the year. We actually have the benefit of some time to be able to analyze that data so that we ensure that no one is is going to be penalized for what's going on um, in these very unsettled times right now. So I just want to help assure you of that. And we don't have worked out what formula we're going to use yet or any of those details because we want to be able to just look at the data and see what it looks like. Um, and that we won't be able to do until the fall. Um, we are wrapping up our grant reading and putting together the package for approval that will allow us to post the results for uh, the next WIOA Title II grant cycle. That should be happening in, in the next week uh, to 10 days. And um, I also want you to know that uh, our WIOA expenditures have been extended until September 30th, not the 20th, that was in the notice that came out today, but September 30th, 2020. So you can continue to expend dollars um, through that time period. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions that um, folks may have. Okay, everybody, this is your chance. Uh, last week, we did get quite a few We Owe It To questions. We also have Jay Wright in the chat to answer any technical questions. And we have Carolyn to answer any kind of policy or funding type questions. So hopefully you're typing away furiously because this is your opportunity. So I, uh, so Dana asked about uh, third quarter ECR. So the third quarter ECR is open and um, we will likely try and close that around the um, end of this month. This month we may extend it a little bit we want you to try and get in whatever expenditures that you can uh, so that dollars can continue to flow into your districts or your agencies. However, if you're not, it, it just put in as much information as you can, as much of your claims, um, likely it'll be salary expenses to put in there. Um, and then we know the bulk of the expenditures will actually come in in that fourth quarter claim. So uh, we just wanna be able to get money continually flowing to your agencies and not have uh, the current situation stop that flow of funding. And there might have been another question, Neil, while I was talking and I didn't see it. <laughs> uh, well, just on the same topic, Jody asked, should we expect final ECR for 1920 to be due October-ish? 
No, the final, um, yes, yeah, so we haven't figured out that date yet. It'll probably be a short time window it, because we have to get some data to turn into the feds. So we would want you to have all of your expenditures and everything ready to go um, into that fourth quarter claim um, probably by early October because it'll open probably for just a couple weeks. We'll open at the beginning of September and we'll leave it over open an extra couple weeks um, for those final expenditures that you'll have in September. Okay, Sorry, and then that was a good question. <laughs> right, Peggy asks, uh, how about post testing, and how will we deal with that to be able to accumulate payment points? So again, um, right now we know that um, Casas and Jay can speak to this is looking at ways to um, do post testing. The feds have um, allowed for states to do post testing, but we still have to follow all of the NRS rules, which um, have to do with the proctored test and making sure that it's secure and that we can verify the test taker's identity. So there's all of those pieces that CASAS is working to try and figure out and Jay might be able to chime in if he would like. But again, uh, we're gonna be looking at everyone's data very closely and um, so that no one is penalized for not being able to test students. Also in CASAS right now, there is a box, and I'm hoping Jay can speak to this, that you can check that said that you're not able to do post-testing at this time with those students. Okay, uh, Veronica, are you able to unmute Jay for a second? <clears throat> Okay, maybe we'll wait till Jay gets unmuted. Um, the, the question from JMG is related to testing as well. Uh, let's see, Karen M says, will there be something in writing for our district regarding the extended expenditure date to 9-30-20? So we can certainly send out something more formal. formal. We've put it in these two, uh, the last two weekly memos and uh, we can post something on our website that is formalized that you can then use with your district. I'm making a note of that. Okay. Hello, I'm gonna butt in here because I was muted for a while, but it looks like I just got unmuted. Go ahead, Jay. Okay, just making sure you can hear me. So what I think the best thing related to testing is, is there's no, specific thing I can really say that's going to fix everything other than that we have been working lots and 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 lots of on this the last couple of weeks. We've been testing lots of different configurations to see what seems to be possible work possibly working versus other things that clearly won't. I think the best thing is I posted a new a link to an updated statement. There's that Octay Memo 20-3 that came out the end of March. We posted a statement that day about some of the things we intend to do to address some of the things Octay said. We updated a new statement last night and posted it today. Uh, you know, it's still addressing the same sort of things. It still gives the same bottom line that we're still doing a lot of piloting and working out a lot of things. I'll say it's a little bit more ambitious or aggressive probably though than the statement we put out in March that we definitely are a lot more committed the more we're into it. it all, we also talk about, uh, we're also looking at the citizenship interview test as well as EL civics co-ops. You know, we kind of feel like the barriers with some of those things are probably lower than the barriers with pre and post testing. So we're also working quite a bit on, you know, how we can, you know, at least have some of those co-ops available for this as well. So Jay, regarding uh, co-ops, there was a question from Avon for IELCE. If we have two of the components, but not the last to complete, for the three-legged stool, will we be penalized? We we have one last co-op to do, but need the green light to do it via Zoom. Yeah, for now, we don't have anything like that. Uh, there are 
co-apps that we're looking at. I mean, uh, the good news is there is a couple of those that are in IET, you know, making a really, really long story short, there's, you know, probably about 60 or so, you know, total, you know, we know that some of those, you know, are about 120 some odd, if you just look at the assessments themselves, we know that some of them are pretty conducive to remote testing. We know some of them are definitely not. So we're looking at a combination of ones that look like they're very conducive with ones that we know are popular with lots of different agencies. So it'll be a limited number, you know, no matter what we do, but we are looking at least having, you know, a limited number that represent ones that are easy to do remotely and ones that are popular among many agencies. So we'll at least have something available for people to use. All right. And then this question uh, from Jamie Cola and any discussion on potential changes to keep funding as a result of the pandemic. So like I said at the beginning, the May revise, we'll see if there's been any change in the COLAs to all the programs that received a COLA. That includes adult education. And so what I've done is reached out to any direct funded regional consortia, and I've given them the scenarios. You know, we get our funding plus the COLA. We get our base funding, but no COLA. Uh, we get cut all around. And so because uh, direct funded consortia have to prepare a little different than the ones with fiscal agents because we do send the funding directly to each member. We have to know exactly how much that is. So I'm working with those direct funded members as they work towards certifying their CFAD so we know if there's going to be any changes um, with or without a COLA. But Jamie, I don't have any new information, although we do think the influx of federal uh, money through CARES and other efforts will uh, uh, help us get through this and maybe not put as much stress on the state budget. So we're crossing our fingers that that would result in maybe not a cut to adult education, but we don't have a crystal ball to say uh, yay or nay on that yet, nor do we have any inside information. Uh, we'll just have to wait till the May revise. Okay, so here's a question for CASAS. Where do we log the COVID-19 notation that was mentioned okay. by Carolyn? Thank you. That was the other thing I wanted to address is uh, we don't have that now, but it's, I forget what day next week, but there is a new TE build mid to late next week and it will have some kind of checkbox. But yes, in that same Octay memo, uh, you know, there's mixed uh, feedback on the testing, but it's very clear that all states will have to have a checkbox available to show who was affected. So that will be coming shortly. Okay, and then Lucia says, our school is updating the way we register students. I've looked for a policy on how to address photo ID. Currently, we only have done paper and pencil registration forms and students were required to show a picture ID we want to make sure we stay in compliance. Do you have any suggestions? Is that a Carolyn question or is that a Jay question? Uh, yeah, Jay, I don't know if you want to take that or. Well, I don't know if it's, re I mean, I think it's probably a district policy on how you want to deal with IDs. I mean, I. I mean, that does seem all over the map. Some are worried about identity. Some go out of their way to avoid putting pressure like that on the student. But I would just say that said, I mean, uh, at least with test, I, I mean, I'll just say what we've kind of been looking at with testing, that if everybody's remote, you know, there's ways where you can have them take a picture of it on the phone and email it to you or text it to you. You know, there's lots of things like that you could do if your district policy is such that you need to have an ID like that on file when they register. I don't know if that's really what the question is after, but that's what pops in my head anyway. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good answer. Okay. Okay. And then Carolyn, did you mention what the ETA is for post-testing options, or is that something that you guys will have to be reviewing with CASAS as they go through the various options? There's not- Yeah, it's like really, this. yeah, we're really working on it with CASAS. Okay. So I don't know that Jay has any updated information, but we are certainly looking at all options. 
right? I, there's no exact timeline for co-ops that's a related question. So no exact timeline, but I'll just say that is kind of on the front burner now because we do see there being more promise with that, I think, in terms of making a quicker timeline probably than we're able to do with testing. But as okay. far as what date something will be available, sorry, I do not have anything like that available right now. Okay, and then Jody, I think this is for Carolyn, just a reminder, mm -hmm. please note when deciding on final ECR due dates, that salaries in September won't hit ledgers until mid to late October, in some cases, maybe later. So oh, great. That, yeah. Thanks for that information. Okay, and then Sharon asks, oh, so Jay, I think you already hit on this. Any time frame on when you would be able to identify those co-apps that we could use remotely. Yeah I, yeah, I addressed that in the chat and verbally. Yeah, we don't have a timeline, sorry. Okay. So I think that's all the questions right now. I don't know, do we need, <laughs> Veronica, are you ready to do some polling? Sure, do you have any questions? I don't know, let's see. Jay, is there a, a, a burning question that you would like to ask the field, kind of a yes or no response. It's easier a to yes tally. or no response. Okay, well, you know I never do yes or no responses. I'm <laughs> too open ended for that. I'm the wrong guy to ask that one too, right? Well, it's part of that therapy that we have you going through. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> well, somebody says yes here. I don't know if that was yes to me or yes to somebody else. Something somebody else said. <laughs> I think they're just okay. having fun. Everybody, okay, now everybody's pig piling on. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll start. So, Veronica, let's, let's ask people uh, if they, do they still plan to be open next month offering, offering instruction and or services? Because last week we had 90, what, 95%? So... And let's wait till Veronica does the poll before you uh, before you answer in the chat. Is next week spring break for some folks? I think it's still yeah. So I'm thinking about are you going to be open in May? Because oh, May. Got it. yeah, because spring break is still happening in some places. Yep. Okay. So and then <laughs> Veronica, how do they? You're going to post this and then they can. Uh, they can respond. I have a good one. I have a good question. Oh. Next, Neil. Okay. Let's see how Veronica is going to post this. This might be, I'm probably asking her to do too much. Give me just one second. It's okay. frozen right now, but I have the question in here. Okay. Neil, at one point, um, this is Bronca, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes. So um, when you asked that question about open, um, are you assuming open online or open physically? Because Lynn just posted in uh, here in Sacramento region, we know that all the schools will be closed all the way through the school year physically, but right. we'll be trying to offer distance learning. So do you need to make it more specific or do people understand that it's online only? Well, depending on if you're offering services, let's say we know some schools are becoming food pantries so people can come by and pick up food or some people are offering computer lo loan out of uh, Chromebooks. So technically, does that mean the school's closed if they're still providing services? So it could vary, you know, because some schools might be more of a community partner and others might be, like you said, just offering online uh, instruction and no contact with the public or not participating in any community type events. So I don't know, um, maybe the majority of them are just doing online instruction, but we don't know. Does that help? Yes, so we'll take that open as, as uh multiple variations yeah. okay could, yeah could be all over the place okay it's whatever you consider open so Nina, what was that what was the question about uh ged 
I didn't yeah, there see was it. a question. Anyone heard from GED about online testing options or, or a reduction in pass score for those that are closed? We have people that are waiting to take their final GED test. So I do know because I had a call with GED, uh, I don't know, you know, the days are all blurring together. Um, had a call with GED and they're gonna be looking at doing some um, type of remote testing. Again, they're uh, working to figure that all out and how that will be proctored. So I think just wait. Um, you have to wait a little longer for more information on that. Okay. And then, um, so if we did, here's a question. So Carolyn, did you have a question? I think Veronica is still working on another question, but. Well, no, I can launch be, the first one. Oh, you did? Okay. No, I can now. Oh, you can. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and we'll let people populate it. Any so instructions? It's been launched. And I'll, I'll email you, Veronica, my question. Maybe that'll be easier. Well, no, if you could just type it in the chat, that would be great. Okay. Like you can private chat me. And I'm doing this on my phone, so you're asking a lot of me. Oh, okay. <laughs> email is fine, so I have my email open. Okay, good. It's probably easier. Okay, I think that's enough time, right? Veronica, what do you think? I don't even know how many people we have on the call today. Oh, 94. We have 94 and we have 61 responses. Okay. So what are we looking at? Pretty much 90, 100%? Right now we're 70%. Really? So between last week and this week, there's been a little change in as they assess online. Oh, no, 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 oh. no, no, sorry. 70% have voted. Um, they're 98% says yes. Oh, okay. So a, a little more affirmative than last week. I think it was 95% were up to 98%. So maybe the only the willing come on these calls anymore and the people that aren't offering any instruction just have failed to come on the calls. Maybe, I don't know. And then I'll let you post Carolyn's question. So let me ask the group in the chat, um, how easy would it be, what would be a suggested easy way to get information to us at the state level of what's happening at the local level as far as success stories? Because we know we can look at the CASAS data, but that student data only tells you know, a certain part of the story. Um, any suggestions on the easiest way for you to communicate with us, how things are going, um, and, and maybe have a little more uh, meat to it? Because someone did send up a nice article that was in their local paper, and those are easy to uh, send out because it is published in a local newspaper. So I don't know if you have other suggestions put them in the chat where, um, you know, we can get some idea of what's the easiest way to communicate with you to start uh, publicizing success stories, how we're doing, how we're surviving, how we're contributing, those kind of things. So feel free to put that in the chat and I'll pick those up. And I'd also like to, this is Carolyn, encourage everyone to do the survey that's on the OTAN website so that we can gather that data. Um, and that one out, that's for all adult schools, regardless of your funding, because we wanna be able to share that information both at the chancellor's office and at CDE so they know that our adult schools truly are continuing to serve their students. Okay, I am ready to launch the second question from Carolyn. So my question, as you'll see, is I'm interested in knowing if or how your if you are working with your agency to ensure that your students have the needed technology for distance learning. 
Uh, and the reason I'm asking that is because I did hear from one adult school who said that uh, that they were partnering with their district. Their district had done a survey. They had surveyed their adults and that they were going to be working to ensure that all students in the district had the technology they needed to do distance learning. And it might be that the family, the family, the parents who are adult students and the children in the, in the school have a one or two Chromebooks that are issued to the family and they all share it using it at different times of the day to ensure that technology is spread throughout the district, which I thought was a really good idea. And I'm just wondering if all of you are kind of thinking differently about how we're working, we are working with our um, districts and our, your agencies and your families. Neil, do we have any other quick questions coming in or that we need to answer? There's a lot of information sharing going on in the chat. That's great. Um, ben Bartlett did bring up, how does this impact the Williams Act, which is kind of interesting. Didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, a lot of, like uh, Connie was talking about, they're thinking about doing a teacher blog to see how things are doing, but they worry about kind of bandwidth, who can maintain it. But there are a lot of good ideas floating around there at the local level. Um, people are really eager to, to communicate and connect and share. So I think the chat will be worth digging through uh, after today. So Veronica, how are we doing? How are we doing on the the second question? Is there an other for the poll? <laughs> I don't think Veronica put an other in there. What was no, the? My apologies, the, I didn't. So that's okay. <laughs> here are the results. Oh, good. Okay. Glad to hear that. Um, Neil, I saw a question come by or a concern go by about um uh they don't have the finances to replace them or i didn't quite it's, see that it it flashed pretty fast on my phone okay if someone wants to repeat that question meaning that if you don't have enough funding i know the governor and the state superintendent of schools was looking uh, working with businesses and companies to donate Computers. I don't know if you saw that article this week, mm -hmm. um, but I know some districts could be strapped to provide uh, Chromebooks and laptops to students or to their parents. Uh, I know LAUSD um, got a, a large sum of money from their district to do that. And I don't know if that was for the adult school or for the unified school district, but I saw that in that article as well. So, yeah, right, so, well, so Carolyn, I don't know if there's a pot of money sitting somewhere for computers, but from the article that I read this week, it didn't sound like, but that doesn't mean the federal money could be used for that purposes, but I think it's up to the legislature or the governor to figure that one out, right? Uh, yeah, partially, and I think some of it's going to go go out. Um, I know that there's some issues with um, of internet access and and Wi-Fi. Um, I know that on the OTAN site we have a list of. It's probably not a complete list, but it's certainly a list of the um, businesses that provide internet that are providing free hotspots. Uh, free internet for folks to use um, as it's related to education. Uh, so I, I know it's probably updated and we should, we'll probably look, we'll have to look into an updated version of that. Um, 
And I know that many schools are also trying to buy MiFi's, those little hotspot things, but I understand they're very hard to get now. So um, supply and demand. Uh, so. Yeah, people are sharing a lot of good issues that are coming up with technology as, as well as, you know, user um, understanding the students, some students don't understand, you know, how to, how to hook things up or the broadband issues or the equipment issues. So it sounds like there's a, in the chat, there's a variety of issues that come with online uh, education from a um, full scale standpoint, you know. Right, Rocky Better just said that Spectrum is provi providing free internet access. So okay. it'll, it'll be, yeah, it'll be great to look through all of those, all of these and uh, put them in buckets for uh, maybe our CAPE meeting next week, Neil. Right, right. So let's see, we have about what, 15, 20 minutes left? And people have been doing a lot of sharing. So I was just wondering, um, maybe is there something out there that you can share as you went through this process leading up to launching your online uh, instructional programs or leading up to maybe you're starting next week, some advice to other uh, agencies out there as you go through, as you went through this process this last, this month in April, ramping up for, you know, going back, things that you would uh, recommend, strategies or tips um, given that you've probably been through a lot, gone on many webinars, uh, looked at your online capacity, uh, huddled with teachers and tech uh, IT people. So feel free to share in the uh, chat. Carolyn, if there's anything else we'd like to hear from the people online, let us know. There's Nothing a lot at of good the moment for me. Going on. Yeah. And if you want to, I mean, if you want to talk and share, Veronica can unmute you, or you could probably unmute yourself if you want to share something that's special happening uh, in your consortia or at your uh, district or at your adult school. So feel free to unmute or ask for help unmuting if you'd All like right. to share. This is uh, Serena Eichelberger from Monterey Adult School. I uh, wrote in the chat box, but one of the things that we're doing to support our students with uh, access to their online platforms is doing direct instruction um, as we are kind of logging everyone in, having one-on-one -on -one office hours with the teachers. And then also we have assigned classified staff members who are um, calling students one-on-one -on -one if they're having trouble with downloading Google Meets on their phone or having trouble logging into Padlet or any of the other kind of online platforms that we're using. I was actually wondering if there was a, oh, we've also developed an attendance tracker to be able to keep track of all the different types of online learning that we're offering to accommodate kind of different needs and different uh, levels of access. Um, but one thing I was wondering, is there going to be like maybe a new co-op that comes out that explicitly is around digital literacy and how to access learning apps online? So I, that's a, this is Carolyn, that's a great idea. And um, I don't know that we have one started. There, we do have some type of a digital literacy one. I'm trying to think. Jay, yeah, hey, this is Jay. Yeah, we definitely have one on digital literacy. I'm not sure it's as focused as the one Serena suggests, but I'll just say I did write it down. It is a good idea. Yeah. And I guess I just encourage you, Serena, to email me if you've got any specific details in mind, because it's certainly a good idea, certainly worth at least taking a look into for sure. Sure. And Serena. Yeah, and Serena, it would, I think it would be great if we could find a way for you to share what you're doing with your attendance. I think that might be a nice resource. Sure, yeah, it's a Google um, Doc. It's just a Google spreadsheet. Um, we did it for each teacher, and I will share it with Neil, um, and he can pass it on as he sees, 
these fit. Does that work for you all? Yeah, because if it because we may be able to post it on on the OTAN resources site as an example of something someone's using. Sure, perfect. And Jay, we did look at the existing digital literacy. Um, I think some components work for it, but we didn't really feel like other components were that applicable, um, particularly like emoji stuff. Um, but anything that is uh, developed that it applies, I'll, I'll connect with you and, and see if we can add some context. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, there's a lot of new things that have come up in the last few weeks. I'm not sure what we have really gets at those specific activities as well as you know maybe what you're suggesting but it's obviously one that everybody's working on here now whether they like it or not so it's certainly a good idea to add it another appropriate um el civics objective right now would be connecting students with community resources because our communities our students are really looking for and need to connect with what's going on in the community with um, that the cities are providing, that uh, nonprofits are providing, et cetera, that will bring them in. So I think that's a really positive one to be working okay. on. I'll just say that too is a good suggestion on that one, though I might encourage you to just to take a look at the list. I don't know what specifically you're looking for, but I'll just say there already are several that do those sorts of things. I'm not saying it goes to the right government office or the right exact activity that you need to do but there's definitely a lot of them like that that do generically what you're talking about for sure anybody else would like to share feel free to i i think you have the ability to unmute yourself and share i do like the idea of the co-ops because we have so much need to, for community resources and you know accessing different uh, services not just adult ed instruction but other critical uh, services and resources i think that's so helpful to walk students through that process so neil this is connie peckettes and i do have a question i typed it in the chat so do we have until April 30th to choose co-apps? So if we haven't used the chosen these, could we still choose them? I think that's uh, I guess you're, that a- I just typed an answer for now. Yeah, it's April 30th. I mean, uh, whether anything like that changes, I think depends on some of the things that Neil and Carolyn were talking about at the beginning, as far as how many people are able to get going and what sort of other things we end up needing to do. But for now, yeah, you know april 30th is that date and then those might be two good ones for online okay feel free to send me feedback if you've got anything specific like that i'll just say the sort of things you're suggesting are the sort of things you know we've started to look at with you know looking at co-ops in general but if you have something specific that you really think would help right now we're certainly all ears we're still looking for um Plans. This is Dana at Ukaipa um, Adult School. How to address the students who don't have tech that we can't get them tech. For ESL, we're giving them packets. They can complete them, turn them in, and then I'll scan them so that, and give it back to the student so they have their completed work so that when they're on the phone with the teacher, they're both looking at least the same completed tacket, uh, packet for productive feedback. It's not a great solution, but it's working for now. And uh, if anybody's got something better, we're all ears. Oh, and then just quickly, someone asked about uh, saving the chat. If you go to the chat, and click on the little button at the bottom right hand corner, the three buttons, it'll say save chat and you can save that. So if you wanna do that before uh, Veronica terminates the call, you can save this chat. Otherwise you can listen to the archive version and get the same chat again. Uh, this is Carolyn, I saw a question about HiSET. <clears throat> I'm gonna make a similar, I'm gonna make an assumption that HiSET is also looking at the option for online proctoring. 
I do not know, and I will reach out to them via our high school equivalency office, and we'll get something in the memo and in the newsletter for next week. Caroline, I think there was a question from Lucia. How are you placing new ESL students? And I'm not sure, I haven't heard too much about anybody placing new students, but it'd be interesting to hear from this community if they are planning to enroll new students and how are they are doing that. So we do know um, based on the survey that um, about a third of our schools are still enrolling students at this time um, and that they are taking advantage of the fact that there are students, that there are adults out there that actually <clears throat> aren't working right now and could take advantage of adult school, so of, of some school and training. So we do know that they're enrolling them. Obviously you can't do a pretest, you can't do any of the CASAS testing, so um, I'm not sure how they're placing them. It might be that they're doing it through a, um, just an oral conversation that they're having. I don't know, I'd love to hear what other ideas folks have about that. There is, there is some follow-up in the chat, a little bit. Doesn't seem like it's widespread. Some have, some haven't, like you said. You know, how do you save um, the chat? Um, can you let me know one more time? So if you go to the, the right-hand corner of the chat, and those three little dots, so you click on that, and it'll save save chat. And when you save chat, it'll save to your folder on your computer. But it'll only save from here going back. So you'll miss the last what next 10 minutes or however uh, much time we have so okay <laughs> thanks sure so it's interesting Lori said i'm understanding we can still enroll via online enrollment process don't worry about pre-testing so jay do you have advice for people that are bringing in new students and uh, how they should be handling that uh, you know, orientation process and enrollment process? Uh, you know, well, I can't give all the answers, I guess. I understand the concern about free testing. I guess the short answers would be that if you're doing locators or appraisals, it basically has the same issue as pre and post test that that would require the proctor just like the pre and post testing does. Although I'll say there's a slightly different answer to placement tests in the sense that we've always said, of course, use the CASAS locator appraisal. But in addition to that, do things like use things like writing samples, oral interviews, education history, things like that, in addition to CASAS to do placement. So we would at least be able to say, yeah, you can do the, you can, in the absence of CASAS appraisals, you can still do those other things. So you still have some way as opposed to no way at all to place students. Okay, and then uh, people are talking about having a party. So we still have the CASAS Summer Institute, hasn't been canceled yet. So that's in June. If, if a miracle happens, we could be partying in Orange County in June, or we could be partying in Oakland in October. And that's when the summit is scheduled to happen and the director's event for, for Kate. So okay. one quick question here, Neil, that came up about, uh, sorry, just about the citizenship okay. interview. So I can't remember if I brought that one up or not, but we had a lot of discussion about co-apps. So I'll just say the citizenship interview or SIT is not able to be done right now, but it like a few of those co-apps, is on the front burner, you might say, because it is an oral interview, we are putting that on the front burner of things that we're trying to get 
you know, cleared up so it can be done remotely here eventually. So I don't have a timeline on that either, but it is, I will at least say, yes, it's definitely on the front burner, you know, with all those obvi obvious attributes you're pointing out. Sorry to interrupt the party talk. Ashley from Santa Monica said they're doing some self-placing uh, of students based on descript descriptions and they're meeting with counselors to determine if it's appropriate. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, let's see if anybody else, please share how, let's see, sorry, how my uh, consortium might procure technology via the Community College Foundation. Can K-12 districts even purchase to them? I'm not aware of what the foundation is offering, but as long as you're procuring equipment for students, I mean, you can't give them equipment, but if you're loaning them with like textbooks for CAPE funds, that's that would be okay, but you should somehow be able to track that and follow your local district policy and procedure for equipment purchases and loaning those out to students. Um, you know, whether you're working with the foundation or a business or another district, I would still say follow your local policies and procedures, make sure they're CAPE enrolled students and make sure it's in the seven program areas and you have a way to find out where that equipment's going. So, and also I forgot to say CAPE 2021 on schedule for Sacramento. I'm not sure what if you guys are still doing April in or if it's another date, but don't forget about that as well. And the dates for October, Veronica, for the summit are which dates? It's uh, October, is it 5th through the 8th? Or did Fifth I get that? 5th through the 7th. 5th through the 7th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, thank you. For putting that. And Janet is accepting new students. And Neil, I think you meant to say it's the CCAE conference, right? Yeah, didn't it? It was the one for next year, right? 2021? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, 2021. Yep. Yes, we are, Neil. Okay. Limited, but we are. All right. All right. Any other uh, information to share? Or anybody want to unmute themselves and share? This is Bronca. Hi, Bronca. Hi. So a little bit outside of our day jobs, but looking into the future, um, COAPE just had uh, their virtual advocacy day on April 8th, two days ago. And COAPE, for those who don't know, is the National Professional Association for Adult Education. And in an email that they sent out uh, preparing us for this uh, event, they mentioned that there may be some additional emergency funding for, of course, what's going on, and that they would be advocating for additional $200 million in WIOA money now, and potentially $800 million in the future. Because after all of this is over, we will most likely see an influx of uh, adult learners in adult education programs. So this is just something to think about and prepare ourselves for. Yeah, that's good to know, Bronca. Thank you. And then I'm not sure what the plans are for Adult Ed Week. I know we're not gonna be doing things in person, but I know CCAE and CAIA are looking at maybe an alternative, but uh, it would be important once we find out how well things are going and we're back in business to tell our public officials how important we are to the community and to our adult students. So um, and there's, I can provide an update on that too. If, uh, if folks go to CCA's website under legislative news, I think Don Kopke, CCA Ledge Advocate, just posted what the plan is and it would be virtual outreach to our local representatives. So please go check that out. Great. Neil, I'd like to share a, a success story. This is Karima from Salvag College. Hi, Karima. Hi, everyone. 
I'd like to just uh, share about uh, the adult, uh, Adults with Disabilities program that we call OASIS at Salvat College. Initially, when we were discussing moving to moving all our, program, our programs online, we decided to move adult ESL and uh, you know, citizenship and high school equivalency programs, but we were going to just stop offering uh, the Adults with Disabilities courses. But then a week later, we reconsidered and moved all our OASIS classes online. And I was invited last week to attend one of the Zoom classes with our adults with disabilities. And it was heartwarming and humbling to see our students happy to see their instructor, just happy to see each other. They're participating in Zoom. And I'm very happy that we made the decision to keep our programs to just transition them uh, to remote instruction. And that's, that's huge. Our students are very happy to have us in their homes. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. That's wonderful. We'd like to highlight stuff like that. Um, and so when, if you are participating in an advocacy event, whether I think the community colleges are doing something the third week or through CCAE, um, we'll share whatever information we get from the field. And if we can put that together in time, we'd love to share that with you. So you at least know not only what's happening in your district, in your region, but what's happening around the state. So we'd love to be in partnership with you guys on that because it's our program and we do wanna make sure that um, it's not harmed by any kind of budget um, situation that might develop over the next month or so. So keep keep sharing and we'll keep putting this together and we'll work, we'll work through it, so. All right, Carolyn or Veronica, any closing uh, comments? No, this is Veronica. Carolyn had to jump on another call. Um, for me, in closing, as we do every week, we will be sending a follow-up email with a transcript of the chat so that you all have all of the same information as well as the recording. Um, all of you should have received an email regarding our regional network meeting. So it's an opportunity, just as we are doing today, for us to get together and dialogue and share kind of what's going on and offer feedback and suggestions and promote resources that you all are using in your individual programs. So we have um, split the state up by region. So each region will have an opportunity. You don't have to necessarily um, stick with your region. You can participate in other regional meetings, but however, we just wanted to get all of the regions together at one time. So if you haven't done so, please be sure to register for that, um, those meetings. They will take place over the next two weeks or so. And that is all that I have. Again, thank you all very much for participating in today's office hour. Please be on the lookout for that follow-up email, as well as other resources that we have come in contact with, we'll be sure to share everything. And also, please be sure to complete the evaluation. Again, that's an opportunity for us to look at what we could be doing to enhance these opportunities that we have together and then provide whatever resources and support you are looking for. So with that, thank you Veronica, all. Veronica, one last thing. So if you didn't get an invite to the regional meeting and you still want to attend, just email TAP and they can forward that to you. Sometimes the uh, email addresses might not be updated in Nova. And so we are only as good as our current listserv. So uh, if you don't see it or didn't remember seeing it, please contact TAP and we can include you in that network meeting. But thank you so much, Veronica. And thank you everyone uh, for coming on the call and sharing today. I hope it was worthwhile. Okay, great. Thank you all. Have a great weekend.